We are talking money and finances during this pandemic once again with Winnie Sun, Managing Director of Sun Group uh, Wealth Partners. I want to ask you about the, the latest on stimulus here, Winnie, but I got to start first with this story last week that's kind of leaking into this week about Robinhood, uh, GameStop, Reddit. It just cooked everyone by storm here. I don't know who the bad guy is. I don't know who the good guy is. Uh, I'm still learning about this. And so tell us or tell our viewers right now how big a deal this was last week and moving forward into this week. Well, it was a huge deal, Mike, because so many people were affected. Well, first off, we got to start, of course, you know, the, the disclaimer is that uh, we're not giving any sort of investment advice on this topic at all as we're referencing these, these particular companies. But basically, this is what happened. You know, Robin Hood is an area where a lot of people do it, uh, a lot of do it yourselfers where they are trading themselves. They're buying and selling stocks, maybe buying options themselves. And what happened was there was a group on Reddit called Wall Street Bets. And in fact, what they did is they encouraged each other to bid up the stock for GameStop last week. And this was huge because this resulted in more than a billion dollars in a single day of the company stock um, shooting up. It, it was incredible. In fact, so many, in, in, to give you a reference point of how big this is, we're talking decades worth of returns and basically in less than a month. Now, none of this was really not, I shouldn't say none, most of it wasn't based on anything fundamental wise in terms of stock, but simply because uh, these, these I don't even say they're bogglers, but you know, Reddit is a social media site. So you had like literally, I think they have over 3.3 uh, million subscribers within this site talking about that you should go in and buy this stock because hedge funds have shorted the stock. And so what that means is basically, you know, because at some point hedge funds will have to go back in and buy the stock back. You know, this could be a really interesting uh, trade. They were talking about trading. So what it really preface that the big difference here is trading and investing, especially when it p pertains to Robin Hood and Reddit and what was ha happening last week. This is not what we would consider investing. This is more in the lines of like casino gambling. Wow. So moving forward, I mean, these hedge funds lost billions of dollars. Not, people are saying, well, was anything done illegally? Well, technically, yeah, technically not. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I think here's what I would say. Uh, you know, you and I are definitely not legal experts and certainly not in the securities law area. So from, from my simple uh, uh, research on this, I would say it seems like this is a very gray area. Certainly the Securities Exchange Commission, the SEC, is looking very closely at this. Robinhood has put into provisions, not letting their users, you know, buy more than one share at a time right now. So a lot of people are taking action. I think this is going to end up being uh, not only a movie one day, but a case study on what uh, regulatory uh, agencies need to come in and make changes so that this can't happen again. Yeah, uh, definitely a, a David Goliath story, you know, and, and you say, I think MGM just acquired the, the movie rights to this story. So uh, we'll be talking about it for Sometime down the road uh, to the pandemic now and, and President Biden, I know he's meeting with uh, just about 10 or so Republican senators trying to come to a compromise on this stimulus package. At last check, $1.9 trillion. Uh, where does it stand uh, and what do you think we're going to get past here eventually? Well, you know, there's, there's certainly some good news. And the good news is that uh, both parties are now coming together and going to have a discussion. Let's see if they can come to something happy medium. Uh, it looks like, you know, a lot of the fundamental things that many of Americans are concerned about seem to still be on the table. So right now, how it stands is President Biden is looking at a $1.9 trillion package. Republicans that are coming to the table to negotiate are at $618 billion. So you might say, well, that's a big chunk of difference. And it is. But there are certain things that are still continuing to be on the table, which is good. So right now, Republicans are looking for a thousand dollar per person stimulus checks. As you know, uh, President Biden is looking for fourteen hundred dollars, so we're, we're a difference of four hundred dollars there. Um, but here's what's good: is both parties seem to agree that there should be an enhanced. Uh, extending the enhanced federal unemployment benefit at its current level. And also, they also both believe that we should fully fund nutrition assistance to help Americans who are struggling um, with food, right? And then they also both agree that there should be additional resources to, sm to help small businesses and employees through the Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP, which we know is available right now. Um, and, and 
opening school. So I feel like fundamentally there's a lot of similarities. It's going to come down to how much each party is comfortable spending. But it feels like at least everything that we're reading right now across the board is, and you're seeing this because the stock market is actually doing quite well, responding well to disinformation. It seems like there's definitely a sense that uh, both parties are, are engaging on healthy conversation right. and hopefully the package will be good for us. And I even heard Janet Yellen basically put out the point, look, go big or go home in regards to defending the $1.9 trillion. Like, look, we'll deal with the repercussions later, but let's just get the, fun, you know, get the money and dip it you know, into our society because we need it right now. We need it, we right need here. it, definitely. Um, here we are talking at home, uh, tax season, home office tax deduction. Can I, can I get something for, for working at home for the past year or nearly a year? <laughs> so Mike, I, I wish I could tell you some great news, but this is something that a lot of people are asking about. And if not, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking about. Here's some good news though. For a self-employed individual, uh, the federal tax, the federal income tax home office deduction can actually amount to thousands of dollars uh, this year and actually every year. Uh, and it's a major tax saver. So there are certain expenses that you can uh, deduct if the caveat is if that you're self-employed. That can include mortgage interest, insurance, utilities, repairs, maintenance, um, depreciation even, and rent. So you don't even have to own your home. You could be renting your home and have this deduction. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to fill out form uh, 8829, IRS form 8829, which is available to both homeowners and renters. Um, and here's the thing, you definitely want to, if you're going to do this, is document um, your, your, your housing situation. So mm -hmm. you want to basically take a picture, like I'm working out of my house right now, take mm -hmm. pictures of your surroundings. Now understand that the, probably the biggest thing is that this room has to be used regular and exclusive for business use, meaning like you can't have your room also be your child's you know, bedroom. That's what this um, is, so I would not qualify. <laughs> well, you, I don't know that you would qualify because unless you're self-employed, if you are an employee or W2 employee at a company, yeah, yeah. then fortunately that entire population is completely off the table <laughs> as of right now. That could change, they said, it's possible, you know, COVID provisions could change that, but they're saying that right now it doesn't look like lawmakers have much interest in this topic. <laughs> no, my son does because he's interested in getting me out of the room. <laughs> he wants me <laughs> to go back to work uh, in our studio. Um, what do I want? Oh, one for the road here. When it comes to um, to just saving, you know, people are making money for those who are lucky enough to have a job. If if they don't qualify for the Roth IRA because they are making too much. Uh, Winnie, what are you recommending? Where else can they dump some money here? Um, just other options right now. Yeah. So Mike, this is actually a, a big topic right now because we know that, you know, taxes are probably going to be going higher. A lot of people want to try and put more money into the Roth. So a married couple, uh, the income limit is going to be at a, about 195000 If you're single, head of household, about 124000 If you make more than that, then you can't contribute directly into a Roth. But here's the good thing. And you should definitely talk to your accountant um, t when you do your taxes um, come this April or if you file earlier, because you actually might have the option to do a Roth IRA conversion. So that would mean that even if you contributed already to your 401k, you still always have an IRA contribution uh, amount that you can do if you have income. So you could potentially contribute to a traditional IRA and then the very next week or a couple of days after do a Roth IRA conversion. And you want to make sure that you work with someone who's very familiar with how to handle these. And most importantly, you want to make sure that your accountant is aware that you're doing this. So everything is done, I think, up and up because the IRS doesn't want to see you do an incorrect IRA contribution. Okay. Right. So, so, but yeah, do know that that's still available. And um, actually we're sort of in the perfect storm right now because between January 1st and April 15th, for those of you who haven't made an IRA contribution yet for last year or this year, you technically could put up to $12,000, 6,000 for last year and 6,000 for this year. If you're over 50, you can even put more. All right, good tip. Winnie Sun, Managing Director of Sun Group Wealth Partners. Always appreciate your time. Thanks, Winnie. Have a great week. Thank you so much, Mike. Take care. You too.